Welcome back once again guys to another SBT playoff video where we have a round one match in the uh, C League division where we have uh, Dix and his um, Galeta Tassere versus Starfish and his Cairo Camels um, and uh, two very good players again um, uh, Dix of course um, he's one of the newer recruits to the C League and he's managed to make his way all the way to playoffs so very uh, very good on his part congratulations again uh, star um, you know if he wins this match uh, he makes it up to B League and uh, well either one if uh, whoever wins this match makes it to B League I know that star is uh, looking to get back into the to B League division um, and he really did well this season um, I think that he he made a, a nice showing with uh, his team in a very nice team going into this and uh yeah let's let's see how this match ends up going um uh, should be a really good one uh and uh i believe star might have also recorded his part uh, i'm not too sure if he did i'll link it for you guys in in the description below uh otherwise you can just listen to my post comment here um but let's see what they end up uh leading off with i have a feeling that maybe uh dix wants to lead with that uh that heat train he train actually really um uh does well against star's team of course uh, star does have the two water types but otherwise um it, it can really uh, lead well and maybe get up some rocks uh, otherwise if dix wants to just lead uh, straight with the the hydragon maybe it's scarf maybe he could just do turn out i don't really see any other potential leads maybe netta king wants to lead if he's more defensive but otherwise star can just lead off with his greninja maybe get a u-turn off garage can lead crowback can lead he has a, a decent amount of leads that he can do uh, if he put dix um something from uh, from dix there so let's see how they how they lead off here. So uh, the match starts off. Looks like Star leads off with his Jirachi. It could be could be Scarf. It could be just a uh, um, very defensive with U-turn. Could also have Rock in itself. Dix makes a very nice read or or just uh, um, a nice lead in general overall to lead off with his Hydreigon. Maybe to Scout. Maybe maybe he's Scarf as well. Now this Jirachi could have a, f a fairy type move, so maybe Dix is kind of anticipating that to be, uh, he could be Scarf or something like that. Because if Jirachi has the Moon Blast, it will it will do a lot of damage to uh, to the Hydreigon. So if anything, uh, Dix might want to just U turn out or just hard pivot. He doesn't really have a good pivot for this, but um, but Heatran can obviously come in. If he's anticipating a U turn, he might not want to do that. But Porygon two can easily come in as well. So uh, if he does that. Um, then Star can obviously just go into something like the, the Crobat or, or even just the um, the Charizard and start setting up. But who knows? Let's see what happens here. So we just did see the Dark Ball. So this Hydreigon could potentially be Scarf. Uh, the fact that Dix actually went for the Dark Pulse there. Um, he's, he's uh, I think he's pretty confident in going for uh, for a Scarf Dark Pulse. Because otherwise, if he wasn't Scarf, uh, I think he would have actually retreated or go, gone for a U-turn instead. But it does a decent amount of damage. Um, 30% uh, left on that Jirachi. Uh, Jirachi might be a bit, uh, might have some bulk there then. And we could be see, we could be seeing a player of slash a moon blast here, or a U-turn of course. We do see the U-turn. It still does a decent amount of damage. Obviously, we can to the point where maybe uh, Char Charizard could have set up on him, but uh, I don't think he really wanted to take that Dark Pulse damage. So in comes the Top of Penny, knowing that this Dark Pulse. Uh, you know, knowing that uh, Hydra is locked into that Dark Pulse, you can freely get off, um, you know, a Water type move, or maybe start setting up a Calm Mind. So let's see, how, see what he ends up doing here. Of course, Nature's Madness might might be an interesting play as well. So in comes the Porygon, of course, and we do see a Surf. So interesting that he goes for the Surf there because. Um, you know, Cofagrigus could have um, probably come in and was specially defensive, but even P2, very, being very specially defensive, is able to take that hit for no for no damage whatsoever. Nature's Man just might have been the play there, or maybe even setting up. But uh, he does he probably wants to scout, of course, uh, still see what uh, Dix is uh, packing with the, the rest of his mons. Uh, the P2 comes in, uh, uh, Star makes a nice play and goes for that taunt. I'm not sure if Dix was anticipating that, but... Um, he does end up going for a try attack, which ends up getting a crit. So very unfortunate for uh, for this Finny, of course. Um, and we haven't seen the the item on this, so it could be Z move, it could be um, a reducing berry, it could be any uh, uh, a bunch of things. So having this Porygon taunted is a um, 
is a lot more beneficial for stars so that he doesn't uh, you know start to spread um, like status or anything even if he is under misty terrain uh, taunting a Porygon is always nice so it can't continuously recover on you um, let's see if so we do actually see the leftovers I don't think we saw that before but in comes the Kecleon um, I'm not too sure what uh, star was predicting there but very specially de defensive and obviously can't get a status because of the terrain so uh, Kecleon comes in now, maybe Star has a, a nice strategy with this Kecleon. Kecleon has a, a lot of uh, sets that he can run, potentially, like he could be Trick Room, uh, he could have a lot of coverage options, of course, like Fighting Type move, um, and he could be um, Protein, of course, so um, let's see what he, uh, Dix ends up doing here. Obviously, the Kofagris can come in. I'm not sure what that Kofagris wants to do, really, with this Kecleon being around, especially with how especially defensive it is, but he could be Nasty Pohat or something like that, so uh, the, it could give Gallade a chance to come in, but we'll just have to see. So Gallade ends up coming in here. Um, Star ends up doubling into the Jirachi. And we know that Jirachi is uh, is not Scarf, it's actually left over. So uh, Jirachi is in range of a Gallade's, uh, um, you know, like a fighting type move, or even like a, you know, even if this Gallade wants to set up, it'll still do a lot of damage. But I don't think he wants to take like a Thunder Wave potentially. Um, you would have really thought that maybe uh, this Jirachi would have had like a, a, a fighting or um, a fairy type move, but uh, I guess it, it didn't match up uh, well with the rest of uh, Dix's squad. So we'll see if uh, Jirachi ends up uh, getting swapped out here, maybe for the the Finny or the Crobat. The Crobat is also a nice switch in there, but you know who knows if this Glade wants to set up. If it sets up a sub right now, it could be uh, pretty detrimental. We could see a bulk up as well. We do see a sub, so very nice play on Dix's part, um, and also a very nice play on Star's part, of course, just going for the U-turn to potentially break a sub, but it doesn't actually break the sub, which is very interesting to note that this Gallade might actually be a bit more bulky or some kind of uh, HP invested, and since we know that it's Substitute, uh, we can safely assume that he is uh, packing some bulk on him. Um, of course, this Crobat comes in, a uh, very nice uh, switching for Star. I think he might be Infiltrator, you know, to... Uh, to obviously brave birth through the sub so very nice on stars end there he can uh, he doesn't have to worry about the fact that this Gallade is hidden behind a sub he can easily just go for brave bird and perhaps ko this Gallade. We'll, we'll have to see right here um he does actually swap out into the crobat or so the sorry the porygon too and we do see the brave bird it does a respectable amount of damage i'm not too sure if that's uh if offensive or not but in comes the jirachi here uh, perhaps trying to get a wish off, uh, which would make a lot of sense, and just get more le leftovers recovery in general. We could see a Toxic here. We do actually see the Stealth Rocks, a very nice play on, on uh, Star's part. Uh, of course, he does have to forfeit his Jirachi to that Porygon, um, since that Porygon was at plus one there. But I think Star might have uh, uh, might have taken that trade, to getting up Rocks for the sake of losing Jirachi. Um, because what this ha um, what this opens up now is potentially um, a Charizard setting up. Uh, it could also um, potentially have the Finny come in or the Greninja. <clears throat> it's really not actually in the best um, favor for Star right now because this Porygon 2 is still very healthy and the Cofagrius is also still very healthy. So um, it, it could have to, um, Star could have to uh, start wearing things down before he can actually start uh, sweeping later. But uh, we'll see what he ends up going into. We, don't, we still don't know his exact strategy. Tapu Finny comes in. Uh, we have seen that he is Surf and Taunt, uh, but he actually doubles into the Kecleon, perhaps uh, not wanting to get status on anything. Um, Kecleon is able to take that try attack, of course, but he is at half health now, which is very unfortunate. Uh, we do see the knockoff, and um, obviously it's going to do a lot of damage, uh, but this Gofrag just actually has the Culverberry. Um, and now that uh, this Kecleon is mummied, he actually can't change his typing anymore. But in comes the, uh, the Greninja. I'm guessing to p apply uh, enough pressure with uh, some Dark Pulses, but obviously P2 is still very, very healthy. Um, we do see the Hydro Pump. I'm not sure. So that's Life Orb damage. So um, uh, we do see the U-Turn as well. Now this Porygon is immediately probably going to go for the Recover here, as um, as of course uh, um, the Kecleon can't be poisoned on entry because of the the Mystic Terrain. Uh, very nice there. Of course. Um, as soon as Tapu Finny comes in, uh, he will get, she will get poisoned. Um, but because the poison takes effect 
or the Mr. Train activates. So that's something unfortunate as well. Of course, uh, Crobat can still clear some hazards, but um, I would imagine um, with Star uh, setting up his Stealth Rock, he might not want those removed. It doesn't really hurt Dix's team too much, but it does um, allow Dix to take some chip on potentially the Heatran and the, uh, the Hydreigon and whatnot. So. Interesting to uh, note what this Kefteon is going to go for. Of, of course, we might see another knockoff, and it could do a lot of damage to anything. I don't think anything really wants to take a knockoff, especially with Rocks Up. So this could be a, a free knockoff for Star if he wants to go for that. Uh, this probably gets to it KO'd by a knockoff, I'd have to um, assume, but uh, um, unfortunately Star ends up going for the, the Drain Punch. Uh, so very unfortunate for him. That means that this Kafagagus can start doing some pain splitting uh, shenanigans, which he does. Um, and we have seen that he was cold and buried, so it's not like he can recover up anymore. We could see a roost from this Crobat. We actually see a taunt. So uh, very nice to bring taunt against Dix's team. We have seen that uh, you know his team uh, relies a lot on passive uh, passive moves. But uh, this Sporygon, because of the download, gaining a special attack, is doing a lot of damage to Star's team. Wearing it down to the point where perhaps um, that Nidoking is going to become a big threat for him. Um, and another unfortunate thing to know is that uh, because Star has removed the rocks on uh, Dix's team, uh, he feels less pressured by all of his switching. And of course, Star can't get up rocks anymore. Um, he could still have rocks on Ketheon, but I kind of doubt it. Um, the Kecleon seems like he's more, um, the Kecleon seems like he's, uh, Salt Fest, if I had to guess. Um, so, we have seen the leftovers on this top of Finny, so I'm not too sure if anything's carrying a Z-move. The, um, uh, the Crobat could potentially be carrying a Z-move, not too sure there. Um, but anyways, this Porygon is becoming a, a force to be reckoned with. In fact, another, uh, another one of those Tri-Attacks will knock out this top of Finny. So he might just want be wanting to go for that right there. We do see a protect actually, so very nice. Um, uh, this Finny is able to live another hit uh, and maybe go for uh, maybe go for something here. He goes for that Moonblast, really does not do anything. Uh, and we do see that Tri Attack come off. It doesn't KO obviously. I don't think we're going to see another protect. I think that would be a waste of the Misty Terrain. So we do see a crit. Very nice on top of Finny's part there, but. Obviously, this Porygon is just going to recover. So, had uh, Tapu Fini actually gone for that taunt there, that would have been very nice to break down this Porygon even more. Um, we'll see uh, the the Porygon just straight up take out this Tapu Fini. Unfortunately for Star, uh, that Fini was going to be very nice for walling certain things like the the like the the Gallade. Um, even if Gallade had a uh, Leaf Blade, it uh, perhaps wouldn't have done too much. But now this opens up the door for Hydreigon to really just start spamming his. Uh, Dragon and Dark moves, which is not something that Star wants at all. Um, but I think this might be a good opportunity for Star to get in his Charizard. Uh, this Porygon might not be in range yet, but I, I don't think he's going to be able to get him any lower than this. Unless he wants to go into Crobat and, and taunt him again. Um, but really, I think uh, I think Star wants to go into Kecleon and start knocking off again. Because knocking off anything at this point would help Star's uh, team greatly. Especially with that Charizard wanting to come in later and potentially sweep. Uh, it's going to be hard, um, of course, for that Charizard to really uh, uh, deal out some damage, especially sweeping. Because Dick still has a very healthy um, Cofagrigus with Pain Split. And he still has the, the Porygon, which could potentially recover. So unless uh, Star wants to go into his uh, Charizard right now, I'm not too sure what else he can really set up on, if, especially if that uh, that Heatran is very bulky and has like a Shuck Barrier or something. But we'll have to see. Um, uh, let's see what Star ends up going into. He actually goes into Kecleon. Maybe he wants to get that knockoff off. Uh, it should potentially uh, to a KO this Kofagrius. Um, and it does, well, he gets a crit. I don't know if that crit actually mattered, but... Uh, now this uh, Kecleon actually can't switch his uh, typing anymore. So he's uh, stuck in being a dark type, but he is able to get rid of that Kofagrius, which is very nice, but of course... Glade ends up coming in and knocking off uh, Kecleon's Assault Vest. <clears throat> so Kecleon, uh, I think, was just getting so sacked off here so that <clears throat> Glade doesn't set up any more uh, substitutes. Charizard can now come in if you wanted to. Uh, Star ends up going into Greninja, 
and um, just you turning off uh, the glade actually is able to live that you turn at one percent which is something that star did not want at all um, this glade obviously having a lot of bulk especially um, HP I'm assuming and now that he lived at that 1%, um, another close combat is going to be doing a lot of damage here. We could be seeing um, Crobat come in here uh, just to take this potential close combat. Charizard actually wants to come in instead. Um, and we do see the close combat. It's, it's doing a lot more damage than I, I'm sure that Star really wanted. I think Crobat would have been the play there. Um, now that he's taken a lot of chip, it's going to be really hard for, um, for Star to actually come back into this match. He did have the Pyapa Berry to reduce that damage there, but... Um, to be fair, um, uh, Star really needed that U-turn to KO this Gallade. Uh, he, he was able, he took too much damage with that Charizard. I'm not too sure how he's able to, uh, come back into this match here. Um, we do see the Scarf Hydreigon obviously still being a very big threat. Uh, I think Star can set up on this Hydreigon though. I really do. I think he just doesn't Mega here. He actually ends up Megaing instead and takes a Draco Meteor which KOs him. Uh, so very unfortunate for Star. Uh, I think had he not uh, Mega Evolved there, he, he might have potentially been able to live and set up a Dragon Dance, uh, and and that could have um, that could have maybe brought him back into that match a little bit. And I'm not sure, sure. I'm not too sure exactly why he needed to Mega Evolve there. Uh, maybe he he was uh, just going for the attack, or maybe he just didn't have any setup. Uh, uh, in any case, uh, the the match ends up going to Dix, a uh, very strong 4-0 in his favor. <clears throat> he was able to apply a lot of pressure onto Star's team. Uh, Star, of course, <clears throat> was a. Uh, um, uh, I, I think Star was just not getting the momentum he wanted in this match. Um, instead of uh, going into an offensive uh, threat, um, he kept going into something very passive, um, which Dix could always just capitalize on later. Um, uh, but congrats to Dix, he's able to move up into the uh, the next round of the playoffs where he actually gets to face um, Caitlyn, uh, and that should be a very good match. Of course, Caitlyn being the number one seed in C-League, uh, if uh, those two can face off, it'll be a very nice match. But congrats to Dix for making uh, getting promoted to B-League. Unfortunately, Star um, uh, does not get to move up uh, to, to B-League, of course, but uh, he did very well to get this far, and uh, I think he played the, the match well. It, <clears throat> it just wasn't going into his uh, in his favor. But uh, um, GG to both coaches. I think uh, this match was really good. Um, and yeah, guys.